Okay, today's class talks a little bit more about impacts, a uh, topic that we uh, uh, started on last time. So just as a review, when we're doing impact calculations, um, momentum is conserved during an impact because the forces uh, that the two particles exert on each other are internal forces. And so if we add the total momentum at the beginning, you know, before the collision, which is one, and after the collision, which is two, of the two particles A and B, then uh, again that momentum is going to be the same before and after. Now most of the time we know the velocities beforehand, we know the masses, what we're asked for are the velocities after the impact. So we've got two unknowns here, and so the other equation that we need is the coefficient of restitution, which uh, defines a collision and does so by looking at the uh, difference in the uh, velocities after and the velocities before. Now the coefficient of restitution, as we uh, learned earlier, can uh, vary between 0 and 1. So in the case of 1, we call that a perfectly elastic collision. In that case, uh, uh, mechanical energy uh, is conserved. And we always lose some mechanical energy in a collision. So in a real life uh, collision, that value is always going to be uh, less than 1. On the other extreme, we have a value of 0. And you can see that if uh, you look at the numerator, if VB2 and VA2 are the same, in other words, the two particles move together after the collision, then that corresponds to a coefficient of restitution equal to zero. Now we also sometimes will look at a single particle. For example, if I take a ball and bounce it off of a wall or bounce it off the floor. And so if we look at our definition of a coefficient of restitution and realize, okay, if the ball, say, is, is A and the floor or the wall is B, and of course, that being fixed, I can set those equal to zero. And so our coefficient of restitution just looks at the velocity of the, of the ball before and after the collision. Now, if we go one step further and say, well, what if we drop a ball from a height of, that we'll call h1 and it rebounds to a height of h2? When we drop it from h1, then right before it hits the floor, uh, we know from conservation of energy that the velocity is the square root of two um, square square root of two g divided by h, and that would be in the um, negative uh, direction since if we call positive upwards. Right after the bounce, then the velocity is the square root of two g over h two, and so if we plug those values back into our uh, equation for the coefficient of restitution and so a lot of things cancel out out of that, then what we end up with is this square root of h2 over h1 as being our coefficient of restitution. So again, take the, uh, uh, take the ratio of the height that it bounces to compared to the height you drop it from, take the square root of that, and that's the coefficient of restitution. Uh, one other uh, topic related to impact is be, uh, what if the uh, impact is an oblique uh, like this. So instead of bouncing straight up and down, we're coming in uh, at an angle and of course leaving at an angle. So thing to remember about these kind of impacts is that the coefficient of restitution, remember, relates the, uh, uh, the impulses of the particles on each other, in this case of the uh, ball to the floor and vice versa. And those would be normal uh, direction. And so in this case, those forces would be normal to the, uh, to the floor, or um, again, in the y direction. So in this case, the y velocity would be reduced by that coefficient of restitution. But in the x direction, that component of velocity would be unchanged. Well, that kind of wraps up our uh, discussion of the kinematics of particles, or, and the kinetics of particles. And so next time, we're ready to start on rigid bodies. And just like with particles, we'll start with kinematics and move to kinetics after that. So we'll start out with uh, a rigid body rotating about a fixed axis. And then a couple of classes after that, we'll be moving into what we call general plane motion because a rigid body can both translate and rotate uh, at the same time.